Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're going to look a little bit further at the new Chinese Type 055 Destroyer in DCS. I've got the maker here, CH. Say hello, CH. Hello, everyone. Let me set the scene of why we're doing this today. At some point, I want to run this again. This is from one or two years ago. We did a US and a UK carrier group, two separate carrier groups, versus a Chinese and a Russian carrier group. It's the absolute epitome of GR. It's our kind of biggest thing we've ever done. That was using 1990s technology. We want to redo that as soon as we can using 2020s technology. We've nearly got the tech. The only thing we're waiting for now is our newly redeveloped British Type 45 destroyer. At that point, I would then like to rerun it. But there's a small thorn in our side in the form of the modern adversary ships, the Type 055, and as well as that, a couple of modern Russian ships, which takes us to this video here we just did a few days ago. Can a USAP anti-ship attack sink Russia's Black Sea Fleet. What's important about this is it was our first use of two new Russian ships, the Kazatinov and the Karakur. These aren't the bigger ships in the world, but they're modern. They are less than 10 years old. And the major factor that had for us is that they could intercept the modern US AGM 158C Larazm stealth anti ship missiles. I was not expecting that. In fact, when I started running this in testing, CH will attest to the fact that I uh, called him up in a panic saying, CH, CH, they can shoot down the Larazms. What the hell am I going to do? Can you confirm, CH? Yeah, absolutely. It's, mm -hmm. it's the modern stuff. He explained to me that it's because, again, this is a modern ship within the last few years, a more modern radar that can detect very small radar cross-section missiles at low to the sea, moving at fast speed. So, that put a bit of a spanner in the works. Now, we did manage to overcome those defences, but we had to launch 128 Lorasms at it. It was a very expensive strike. Which leads us on to today. The 055 is also, in fact, it's even more modern. The 055 from China is within three years. It was put into service in 2020. So there are really two things I'm going to look at today. First, can the Type 055 destroyer intercept the Lorasm? That's going to be a very important knowledge for us to know that for our massive fight that we've got coming. As well as that, we need to find a chink in its armor. We need to find how to destroy this thing. It's extremely well defended. How many Lorasms do I have to send if it can intercept them? If it can just intercept them forever and we're going to run out of Lorasms, can we find another way? Can we start launching SM6s at it? If that doesn't work, we've got to find another way. We've got to find a way of destroying it. So... We've got a very simple setup here. This is not meant to be realistic. This is proof of technology and experimenting. This is the kind of thing that we would usually do in the background and not show you, the viewers, because this is just testing. But we thought it might be a bit interesting for you to see the process we go through. So here we have a Type 055 destroyer, if you want to know what it looks like. Ah, uh, that. Technically, it's a cruiser class, but China calls it a destroyer for some reason. Really powerful vessel. I'm not going to go through all the bits of it because we did in the specific 055 video that we did. He is not going to shoot at the Americans today. We just want to see how much damage he can take. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to chuck a B1R at it. And we're going to launch not 24, just 8 Larasms, first of all. These are AGM-158C Larasm stealth missiles. And we're going to see if he can intercept them. I'm not going to ask for the answer, um, CH, but have you actually tested mm. whether he can intercept Larasm? Yeah, the issue is, as I mentioned before, I have test most, tested most of the stuff, but uh, since I do a so lot of these, uh, I actually forget which one mm. works on what. Yeah, I should say, CH does other mods as well. It's not just mods that he does for us, so he has a lot on his plate. Well, that's good. Um, so CH has forgotten, and I haven't tried it because I deliberately wanted to wait to make this video. So let's go. Here goes B1R. At some point, he's going to open his belly. Out come the Queen's finest Larasms. How they come? Lovely little things there. Right, no intercepting so far. Uh, Drop, are you listening in the background? I am. Place your bets. Do you think Type 055 can destroy Lorasm as we've got it set up or not? No, not on its own. 19 miles. Right, I'm going to watch it live now. Valued viewers, stand by for reaction. Right, here we go. It has the 9B long range missile and the uh, HHK 10 missile short Roger. range. Those are the Type 055 missiles, aren't they? Yeah, exactly. And the long range one, I think, goes down to like. 
five meters uh, above the surface Watch and uh, uh, short range even less. But they have to spot them first with the radars. Right. And, and it actually takes time to acquire targets yes. and uh, get stuff done. That's the, uh, that's the issue when you only notice them when they are very close because it takes time and all this time is simulated. Great talking point by CH there. And I've realized I haven't explained this very well, viewers. Why are we doing this? Well, because all of the ships that we have in game that are over 10 years old, which is all of them apart from the two Russian ones, and this cannot intercept it. They cannot see it. We don't fully understand why. It's something to do with the radar cross-section, the altitude, the speed, and or a mixture of those three. Uh, but it's why it's so relevant for us to find out whether the 055 can fire against it or not. Nothing yet, CH. Could this be a cakewalk? <laughs> Just to see. And you, know, uh, and you have to uh, uh, not forget also that the sea whiz, which we always count on for the last ditch, also takes some time to acquire the targets and follow it. So okay. if it is too close when it, it notices it, it, it doesn't have the time to do it. Sea whiz is just aimed at us. Has it got time to fire and react? Sea whiz is firing. Fired one bullet. No, he fired lots of bullets. Things are happening. Now, how interesting. Sea whiz is firing, but not the missiles. I did not expect that. Yeah. Pause. I'm going to look from the ship's point of view now. Try and find out what's going on. Now I didn't. No, look, look, look. The sea whiz has seen it, but the missiles haven't. Yeah. Or uh, actually, he, he has seen it, but he didn't feel he had time to make a uh, a calculation to intercept. Right. Because well, the sea whiz is, is much faster to turn around and uh, against the targets. So that's interesting. So we're in a curious case now where the Russian more modern frigate and Corvette can shoot these down and the Type 55 tries but actually can't. Well, now he's about to get seriously blown up. What an interesting thing to happen. Oh, didn't sink it or did it? Yes, it 100% did sink it. Right. I must admit, I thought it was going to intercept it. But you know what? That makes my job a hell of a lot easier in destroying it. I mean, that's just how it is. It's done. It's out there. It's public. That's how it is. So your takeaway was that the Sea Whiz had the time to track and engage, but the missiles, yeah. for whatever reason, didn't have time to track and, and get ready, do their priming, whatever a sequence it is, and engage. Is that how you read it? Yeah. I would love to know how close that is to real life. Now, we'll never know, viewers, obviously. I mean, does anyone out in, does anyone in the world anywhere, even the specialists, know whether a Type 055 could actually shoot down a Lorasm? No, I doubt anyone, even the makers of the ship, really know. So we're certainly not going to know. But that's how it is. Right. Well, you know what? Because we've still got a video to make, CH, let's carry on anyway. Let's see what else we can get to sync it. Uh, are you surprised out of that by interest? Because I am. I am surprised by that. Yeah, I actually thought that uh, some of the uh, HHQ-10 would uh, actually be launched. Next, we're going to use a Ticonderoga CMP. CMP, Cruiser Modernization Program. This is the Ticonderoga you would see in the 2020s. Now, I'm just going to pause it, so we might as well just have a chat about this, viewers. In fact, we don't often get to sit and chat, so why don't we have a, just a quick talk. This cruiser in real life carries an assortment of weapons. SM6, long-range, surface-to-air, SM2, medium-range, surface-to-air, SM3, anti-ballistic, uh, ESSM, anti-everything within close range, Sea Whiz, and other stuff. In real life, one or more of those surface-to-air weapons have also been rejigged so that they can attack surface targets. So SM6, for instance, as well as doing surface-to-air, can also do surface-to-surface. -surface. Well, my understanding is that SM6 has been fudged to attack surface targets. It's a stopgap solution because the old surface-to-surface -surface missiles, the harpoons, are going out of service as we speak. They're just old tech. They're not competitive in the 2020s. It's going to be replaced by a new series of anti-ship missiles. Think about the Lorazm B, the surface-to-surface Lorazm missile, as well as the Tomahawk V, the Tomahawk 5, which is going to be dedicated surface to surface. But those are very expensive and they're taking a long time to develop, at best, probably 2025. So for the next few years, the stop cap is to modify the SM6s to also do surface to surface. Is it a really good surface to surface missile? No, it's pretty crap and it's overpriced for what it is. But again, it's a stopgap just to keep them competitive. That's my understanding, CH. Is that correct? Yeah, that's my understanding also. So that's what we're going to see today. SM6 is popping up from these VLS uh, launchers here, of which there are a finite amount of them, by the way. VLS hatch opened and SM6 out. And SM6 out from the rear as well. I think there are going to be about... I can't remember. There's going to be enough anyway. 
There we go. Um, I've only put it 50 miles away. They will actually fire from about 130 miles or so. Let's have a look at the SM6. There we go. Up to 50, 60,000 feet and dive down. Very, 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 very fast. Ah, now here's what we wanted to know. Can Type 055 intercept it? It's got something called a HHQ9B. Not the same as a HHQ9A, which is already in game. This is um, essentially China's answer to the SM6. About the same range, about the same pace and so on. And it looks like it's going to intercept them. So in this case, it's going to be a war of attrition, I imagine. Which Who can fire the most quickest? Well, let's speed it up and see what happens. Also, what is that closing rate going to be like? That is 3,500 knots, 2,200 knots, nearly four, no, nearly ugh, six. Oh, lots. It's lots. <laughs> now, getting that to hit that is going to be very, very difficult, but they're doing it. So, well done. How good is HHQ 9B in real life? It's almost impossible to know how good anything Chinese is. They're very, very secretive about all of their stuff. Nothing's through yet, though. Okay, let's speed it up then. No, no, no. China is going to last longer. China's going to have more. He's already out. Huh. Right. Well, let's uh, juice that up a bit then. Let's add a Arley Burke in. Yeah, maybe we should mention that uh, in our configuration, uh, since we have to balance the ships, uh, we have in the Ticonderoga, uh, we have uh, in the anti-ship version 18 of them configured for anti-ship, while in real life you could actually use all your SM6s as anti-ship. So we can simulate this by using more ships. That's true. That said, in real life, would you ever launch all of these SM6s at one boat? No way. They're so expensive and inefficient. I don't think anyone would have ever have the authority to do it. But again, we're just testing today. Uh, right. In fact, why don't we go watch Charlie Burke shoot? There he goes. Ollie Burke for the win. Look at that. Very fast. Very fast, aren't they? Right. Here they go. HSQ 9B. Pang. Pang. No. It's not going to get through. But, but, but you see, yeah, exactly. But they are getting... They're getting close. close. Yep, yep, yep. Could yep. Because the 9B is a pretty long-range missile, but since they're also very fast, the SM-6, mm. it won't go through, but it's... Yeah, they get pretty close. Yeah. But it would need a lot more to get some sort of leakage. Uh, in terms of quantity, do you remember how many HHQs the Type 05 has? I think it's about 70 or 80 from memory. 72 uh, 9Bs. All right. Well, you know what, valued viewers, as this is essentially Mythbusters, let's keep going. Ooh, <laughs> ooh. One way or another, we're killing that Type 55. We've already pretty much debunked this. I don't think SM6 is going to be effective against Type 055, at least assuming it's got all of its ammunition. It's just too inefficient. Yeah, they are fast, but they are too obvious mm -hmm. since they, with their trajectory, and uh, they can be uh, intercepted at, at long distances. Yeah. Yep. What does... Uh, as apart from the uh, LRASMs. Yeah. Now, what does the LRASM have over these? It's a stealth missile. It's got a smaller radar cross section. And it goes low. It goes 20 feet off the ground, or at least our version does. We don't really know how low the, the real one goes, but it's our best guess. So, these have the speed, but they don't have the lowness, and they don't have the radar cross section. They're actually quite a big missile. Right. Now, are we going to get any leakage is the question. Come on, yeah. something get through. I'm going to keep my eyes on it and try. Oh, yeah, stop. getting close. All right. <laughs> How about that? That's going to get through. Eventually, like CH said, Type 055 will make a mistake. And this is what we've always known. About 90s, about 2020s. If you throw enough doo-doo at the wall, something gets through. Because someone in there makes a mistake eventually under enough pressure. And that's what's being simulated here. Yeah, that's going to create a headache. Oh, you say that. I think something's coming now. Oh, look at that. Now, what is that? That is... That's a HHQ-10 to come yeah. out to get it. Whoa, yeah. look at that. Yeah, that's the short uh, range sound from the back. Uh, the one that looks like the ram launcher. Roger. Now, interestingly, it's got the same head as a ram or rim or whatever it's called. The, the yeah. one is... Is that because it's a similar, it's fulfilling a similar role? And do you know what the horns are on it? I, I actually don't know. I think it might be the, the fuse. Right. You saw it first here. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, bang! <laughs> How about yeah. that? That was kind of sexy, right? Yeah. Ready, viewers? This is what we do in the background all day, pretty much. Um, I don't know. Yeah, do a thing. Through the frag pattern of that HHQ 100, which let's see it say. Too many words today, I'm afraid. It's the short range version. Now, the next one's not going to get out in time. In fact, I'm going to quickly, while we've got time, have a look at the launcher, just in case you haven't seen it. That's the launcher there. Now, interestingly, it's, it's restowed itself, CH. See, it's restowed yeah. itself. Yeah, now, it, it's probably why? within the minimum range. Right, or so. or uh, the azimuth or the, the limitations of, as you see, it's placed in the back. 
Right, so it can't see past its own mast. Look at that, it's blocked by its own mast, CH. Yeah, yeah. Oof. Uh, okay, I guess you, what you'd say then is you would never go completely bow towards an enemy, but I don't know that because yeah. I'm, I'm not, not yeah, I'm yeah, a sailor. And, and, exactly, and also with the countermeasures on the sides, you always want some of them to be able to intercept. Yeah, okay. Now, I've always been wondered about the efficacy of an SM6 attacking a ship. Ships are hardy things. Um, they're not like aeroplanes. What kind of warhead has SM6 got? Do you know, uh, CH? 140 uh, pound warhead. 40 pound warhead. And it's done a, moder a modicum of damage. That said, although it wouldn't, you know, do any damage to the structure of the ship, or not, not really, what it would do is take the command out, or take the, you yeah. know, take the sensors out. One thing I've read about reading about real naval warfare books, World War II and whatnot, is just the shrapnel from the initial shell barrage can just take the arrays out. Once those arrays are just titchy bit damaged, the yeah. ship's useless. It can't do anything anymore. Um, so, the idea of high damage does make sense, in a way. Like, yeah. it's not going to sink it, but I'm just going to see if that... Yeah, and imagine you hit uh, one missile on the VLS hatches right. and it'll take every missile out. Yeah, so they are st the ship's strong, the hull is strong, but the sensors are weak. Look at those uh, Acer headers there, or whatever they are, the, yeah. those radar those radar panels, anything. A pellet gun would put them out of calibration, you know? So look at the uh, SeaWiz guy. Yeah, he didn't wow. have the time. He didn't have the time. They're, they're so fast, they couldn't right. move. Yeah, well, I think we found a way of beating it. We just need f uh, a destroyer flotilla. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, that, that's that's the thing, as you mentioned, they're very expensive as mistakes, but you need to go all in if you want to defeat it. Right, so that's something to think about. Uh, again, I should maybe I should have put the costing sheet up um, to show you how much that costs, but that's a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars at this point of SM6s, or it, it is hundreds of millions of dollars. So someone's got to sign that paycheck off at the end of the day, and most of them got shot down. Then again, these HHQs are hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. so it all works yeah, out, yeah. doesn't it? I'm going to see if we can finish it off then, CH. Yeah, he's dead. Oh, look at yeah. No, yeah, he No, he's still firing. How about that? All right. That's impressive. Who runs out first? 18 times 4 is... Oh, I can't remember. Uh, it's 16, I think, on the uh, all this. He's, He's fighting up pretty well. Life. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's... That no, still shot. No! Oh. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> there we go, Valley viewers. We've learned how to take down the 005 in our game, obviously. This is not... Take it with a pinch of salt. Everything's guesswork on Wikipedia, obviously. It's the best we can do. But... In DCS, as we've got it modelled as best we possibly can, I'm pretty happy with that. Um, CH, uh, I noticed yeah. no counter no countermeasures were launched. I am secretly quite happy with that because I don't really like the countermeasures. But... Yeah, because you are straight on. Have you oh. been uh, in, a, in an angle? It's because they are placed on the sides. You can't do oh, it. Yeah. As we mentioned before, you can't really use the one in the back, and you can't really well, use the one you know on the what? sides. That's an important weakness we've learned about. Yeah. Type zero zero, and that's that's definitely true to real life. On the bow, head on bow, that thing, although the Gatling gun works, um, these guys back here aren't going to work. So that's really interesting. And more feedback. Look at us learning, helping the US Navy, CH. <laughs> right, I'm going to try and uh, summarize that, viewers. So, Lorazem, I personally didn't think we'd get through. It did. A few got shot down by the um, uh, big old Sea Wiz, but most did not get through. Uh, sorry, most did not get shot down and did get through. So, 055 has an Achilles heel. We can just launch the Lorazem's at it and kill it. We'll probably just keep it that way. Uh, because, like I said, no one really knows if it can be shot or not. No one knows. Um, SM6 will eventually get through. You've got to put the, basically the GDP of America, pretty much, or England, worth of them to get through. But eventually there will be leakage if you fire enough of them um, in a short space of time and you catch them. And the most important thing I've learned, this is really important, hit it head on, bow on. If you get shots, bow on. She can't defend herself. The countless just can't launch the HHQ-1. What's it called? 10 can't launch because it fires through its own body and it's only got Gatling gun and, um, and the other thing, um, HQ9. That's it, Valid Views. You guys asked for this. You said to investigate how to kill it. We now know how to kill it. So um, as uh, someone important said somewhere, uh, information is ammunition. CH, I enjoyed that. I thought uh, I love doing our little things. Um, anything you've got to add? Oh, well, I'm very happy. The next ship we're going to be working on is Type 45 from Britain. We've already uh, got the model. Thanks for the guy who actually bought that for us very much because you know, it's $80 a model. We will get to work. I hope you enjoyed that and bye-bye.